Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the channel. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing. If not, I'd recommend you subscribing because there's a lot of new stuff coming our way with drones and technology in general, and I'm here to cover as much as possible in as detailed of a way as possible. Today we do have the Parrot Anafi. Really excited about it, it looks good. Uh, just got it in and it's going to be a full on series of reviews for the Anafi. This is just gonna be the unboxing inspection and setup and possibly some updating like I normally do, really go in depth of what you get in the box, uh, how it looks and how to set it up on your phone. I'm gonna be using my LG G6 Android phone today so we'll see how it works on this. Then the following videos we'll be doing uh, flight tests, testing out all the functions, also be doing range tests and possibly some cinematic videos. I live in Hawaii so we should be able to get some awesome shots of shorelines and stuff. So anyways, sit back, relax, and let's get started with the new Parrot Anafi. This is gonna be kind of a direct competitor to something like the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro. Um, and to tell you the truth, it's a lot smaller than it looks like in a lot of the videos I've seen. Just giving you guys kind of a uh, little preview of how the box looks if you've never seen the underside and all the sides of the box. Uh, but some of the features this thing is supposed to do, uh, doesn't say how much range, but it's saying long range. It does have a removable uh, micro SD card in this one, so thank goodness with all their previous crafts like the Parrot Disco and the Parrot Bebop, they all had built-in storage. So this one, at least they give you a card and it's a removable SD card. Some of the main attractions of this one are gonna be its size. It's super small, super light. Uh, it does have a three axis gimbal where the camera can point just about straight up. And we can see that this one does 4K video with a 21 megapixel camera. So anyway, enough talking about the box and what it does. Let's really open it up and just see what's inside. Really good looking quality case here. This is very interesting. It's got like a denim, kind of a gray denim look to it. Really high quality here. It's got these elastic straps, so you could do whatever you wanted with these. Use these to hook them to your backpack or put them on a belt or something if you wanted to. Um, but it's feeling really high quality and it's, it's like a hard shell. It's just a slightly flexible shell, but it's very hard, kind of like a glasses case if you've ever had like sunglasses, high quality sunglasses. Very similar to that. We're gonna open this case up real quick and check this out. So there it is, the Parrot Anafi, just looking fantastic. It's got collapsible propellers. Look how small these motors are, oh my goodness. These motors, they look like they're mini versions of the Parrot Bebop motors. They're so tiny. I can't believe how tiny those are. Um, and this is great because as long as this performs good, this is going in the direction of really downsizing and lightening up these kinds of quads, as long as the quality is good, uh, to make them super compact and also have decent video and that's exactly what everybody's looking for so we're going to get to that in just a second you can see how compact that is folding up i'm going to set this on the side and we're going to see what else is in the box here so we have this cool little platform for the camera you can see how everything just sits in here nice and snug super small case uh, here is our sd adapter card adapter if we want to slide that into our computer usb c cable in here so that's going to be perfect for my phone since this is a usb type c phone and that's really all that's in the main drone case let's see what else we're getting in the box so we have the controller of course i'm seeing the instructions down there and some extra propellers so zooming in on in here um, from just a visual standpoint like if i'm backing off and looking at it it actually doesn't look as quality as it feels like just looking at it, you know what I mean? It looks a little bit toyish, just the, I guess the color and the texture. Um, when I first saw it from somebody else's video, I, look, I was looking at it, I'm like, well, that looks kind of strange. It's kind of like toyish looking. But actually when you get it in your hands, it's actually hefty, it's solid, the plastic is thick, and it actually feels real good. Anyway, here's our two uh, joysticks. So spring loaded, of course, for normal flight. Uh, the sticks do not pop in, push down and click, they don't do that. Here we have uh, two trigger buttons, so this is going to be like our camera pitch. And remember with this one we can pitch all the way up. So we can look at the sky or bridges or underneath things if we want, we can pitch that camera up. So very unique. I'm liking these little trigger buttons, they have a little rubber 
uh, grippy area here and they're also really easy to push up and down. A little different than the wheels that we're used to so definitely very original type of thing here. This is our zoom capability. One thing I forgot to mention is this has a digital zoom and it can go pretty far in. So if you're far away from something or you're trying to inspect, uh, this has a zoom feature. This isn't anything new. Digital zoom, of course, is gonna get a little pixelated, but I just did the review of the Autel Evo and that would have like eight times zoom. It's pretty neat. Even though the zoom is a little pixelated, it's pretty neat to zoom in Say, for example, you didn't want to get close to something or you wanted to stay away from a tree or power lines or whatever you it may be, you have that ability to zoom in and get closer in on a subject. So it's a good feature. This button here has a record icon on it. So that's going to be for recording and pictures. We have a regular size USB here and then we have our uh, USB type C there. Looks like going to be for charging and also connecting to your phone or tablet. And that's where this thing gets kind of interesting. I'm just flipping it around. You can see it's, it's, there's nothing really else there until we flip this thing open. And as you saw, there was no power button. So you see the light coming on now as we open up the phone holder. This is kind of interesting. This is where the antenna is housed. So this is some kind of possibly a patch antenna housed right up there. And we can see that this is a spring-loaded uh, little phone clamp here and it does have like a little notch with some solid rubber underneath here and also rubber here to fit your phone inside. So it's just gonna be like a larger phone or a very small like seven, eight inch tablet possibly. Um, but you can see that that's the maximum extension there. There's our return home button and then this is our takeoff and landing button. So very simple controller, not a whole bunch of controls, just enough to do the things you want to without getting too overly complicated. So, and it feels very solid. So good job on Parrot for simplifying everything and really just making a perfectly compact little controller and product. You can see how big that thing is in my hand. It's not that big. Of course, it looks a little bigger on the camera, but it's really not that big at all. Okay, last couple things in the box. We have an extra set of propellers. Let's just see how many they give us. Wow, look at this. So these things are all laid out. Let's focus in on these. Uh, and we have a full set. So two for each motor. And you see how they're just kind of stacked in there on these little uh, racks. I really like in that. And it shows you how to connect them. A little diagram there. So pretty darn cool. Props to Parrot for giving us uh, a full actual set of four. A lot of drone companies don't give us any or they only put in uh, two extra sets in the box. You know, we're spending like 500 to a thousand dollars for these types of drones. So really, I mean, putting a full set of props in the box for us isn't that hard of a feat for these manufacturers. All right, and the last thing we have are the Anafi Super Quick Start Guide. So I'm definitely gonna be looking at that because I like to get super quick in the air. Pretty good by now at um, figuring out all the functions without even reading the con uh, instructions. But sometimes, you know, I find myself not reading enough and there's a couple things that I need to, to look at a little bit more for proper testing. And here's a thicker one. This is the flight and safety guide. So this is gonna go into all everything you need to know here. This is just really quick to get you up in the air. All right, so now that we've seen really everything that comes in the box, let's inspect the Anafi a little closer up. So the propellers, they're just kind of loosely attached there so they can spin up and expand themselves out when the motors spin up. You can see that we've got the feet here. This, these do have some pretty grippy rubber feet underneath the arms here. You can see that we have a sonic sensor here. We've got a optical flow camera there. There's a fan here. This here looks like a light or possibly another sen uh, sensor. We're gonna see when we boot that up. And spinning it over to the top, there's our battery. We'll be powering that on, taking it out in a second. We've got some Parrot branding there on top. Spinning it over to the front. You know what, let's pop out these arms real quick. So rear arms, boop. Wow, really easy. And I'm hearing a satisfying click. You hear that click? So it's a satisfying little notch click, even more so than some of the other drones. And here's the front. Wow, so super simple. A lot easier to open up than a lot of the other drones that are bigger and bulkier. And that's how it looks when it's completely opened up. Look at that, it just looks like a little insect. One of the cool features of this drone, here's the gimbal and camera here. So we'll zoom in here, we'll take off the camera lens. That just pops right off, there's our lens or the cover actually. And then here's our lens here. Let me just zoom in here and focus. You can see that it says Parrot 21 megapixel 4K HDR. So 2.4 aperture and there's the lens, how it looks in there. It's looking good. 
and just for such a small camera it does look very good and look at these gimbal motors look how tiny those are so we're getting into mavic air type of territory here they've done just a great job at miniaturizing everything and look at this thing so this thing's going to tilt just like a normal um, gimbal and camera it's going to have its roll stabilization its pitch stabilization and this is the angle that you're going to you're going to be able to adjust so you can see that we can pitch it all the way up look at that and that's what's unique about this one is we can get those shots where we can fly under something and really just get up and spec things so a lot of uses for this camera that's going to be able to pitch up and that's pitching down the thing that's kind of interesting about this is i'm not seeing any yaw stabilization mechanically you can see that when we do this move this back and forth it's really just kind of the damper here so I'm, I'm thinking that maybe it's a partial digital stabilization for the yaw so we're going to see how that all works in the flight test definitely don't want to tug too much on those because look how uh thin those things are this is such a light craft look at that rubber so it's just really fragile there so I wouldn't be tugging on that uh, gimbal too much. Let's just go ahead and take off this battery and we just push in this top button, pull it back, and there goes our battery. Here's where our SIM card is. So it is one of those uh, push and lock latch mechanisms, which I don't like that much, but I guess they just did it on this one to keep the size and weight down a little bit. Not too bad, but you know, they can be kind of cumbersome sometimes. Here's the card they are giving us, a SanDisk Industrial. 16 gigabyte and i'm not that good on memory cards but it does have the one and then a 10 on to the right of the one there so it's either class one speed 10 or the opposite i forget how that goes but anyway that's it there i'm sure it's enough uh speed to be able to do whatever this one can do and the way we're putting it back in is just putting it right back down in there making sure that the contacts are that's the reason i don't like these things is because i really like the slide and lock mechanism like the pushing and click actually uh, so we want to push make sure our contacts are face down we want to close our door push it down and then we want to slide and lock it up there we go so once i took the battery off guys this thing is incredibly small and light i mean this seriously feels like it's maybe around like 100 grams or 150 grams it's just incredibly light here is the battery pair it has chosen to give us with this craft it's a lithium ion polymer rechargeable battery 2700 milliamp and it is a 7.6 volt so like a 2s high voltage 2s so it feels very light here's our power button on top so if we press it once you can see that we do have our charge state kind of lit up this one is fully charged because I did just charge it previously. And this is where we get to how to charge this thing. You can notice it doesn't come with like any charger in the box except that USB cable. So really simple, just plugging in that USB-C type, which it has on the back of that cable in the box, and plugging it into any of your cell phone type of chargers, it looks like. And that's going to charge this thing up. Flipping it around to the front, there are the connectors for the where it goes into the drone. So it just looks like it has like two main connectors and then it has some pins in the middle probably for the um, balance information and the smart information of the battery again just sliding this battery on just putting it down on the notches and pushing it forward and it just clicks and that thing's not coming off so a very good and simple battery system uh, what i just noticed is when i grabbed one of the arms i wanted to show you guys this real quick these arms are really flexible so something that's very different from a lot of the mainstream newer drones foldable drones out on the market is look how flexible these legs are and this is following suit to kind of how the parrot bebop was you can see how flexible these are the bebop 2 had the same thing very strong arms but also very flexible so we'll have to see how that works out in the flight test because just touching it here and feeling these arms Gosh, that is very flexible. But if it works, it works. And you know what? That could be a little beneficial for a crash. It'll flex and pop back instead of bending and then cracking. If it's anything like the Parrot Bebop durability, then it's gonna do very well in crashes and bumps. If you get this drone and you're like, wow, the legs are so flexy, what the heck? Um, it could be a good thing, actually. Check out the ends of the landing gear here. So these are patch antennas. So it looks like this one has one, two three four patch antennas it looks like possibly on all four legs we're actually getting antennas for signal while we're looking at the pair anafi i just wanted to pull out my mavic air this is the dji mavic air as you all may know 
and I wanted to just see kind of how compact it looked compared to this. This is right in the same kind of size category. So let's just fold up. You can see how simple that is to just fold these arms up. Everything folds up nice and quick. I'm noticing that maybe you're gonna have to fi uh, fiddle with the propellers a little bit when you're folding this thing up. You wanna make sure that they're not binding and stuff. So definitely make sure the propellers are in this orientation. It looks like if you fold it up when the propellers are here, they're gonna kind of get stuck in this area. So you wanna make sure the propellers are outside and then they'll just kinda of sit in nicely and mold into the case. Anyway, that's how the Anafi looks and right side by side compared to the Mavic Air. There's our side by side. You can see how the Anafi is quite a bit longer. So just about the same height with the battery installed. Very, very, very similar. And as far as the width, the Anafi is definitely more narrow um, on side to side from the top down. You can see that difference there. There's a little front view of the cameras. And then of course, we wanna do a little bit of view on the back. Now, the Anafi does not have the rear sensors like the Mavic Air. You can see how the Mavic Air has rear sensors there. This one does not have any rear or front, for that matter, um, obstacle avoidance as far as I know. Let's uh, undo the legs here and get a little better idea of how this thing flies. So you saw how fast that was for me to undo those legs and remembering these ones to do the back first on the Mavic Air, a little bit longer to open these up. You gotta open that and then the front. Now you can't forget on the Mavic Air, you have to pull down these antenna feet. So one more little step, you know, so it's gonna take you a few more seconds to unwrap this one. And that's kind of how they look side by side with everything extended. You can see how the Anafi back arms are actually just protruding out in an angle where the Mavic Air just goes right out here, but they are very similar in dimensions and size. The rear on the Nafi side to side, it looks like there's, it's a little bit wider. Uh, the front as well, just a little bit wider stance. Front to back, it actually looks like the Mavic Air is a little bit longer on front to back. So that's what we can expect in comparison between these two, which are very similar in class. Okay guys, now that we've seen a pretty extensive look at how this hardware looks from the outside and what's in the box, we're gonna have to download the Anafi software, the Parrot software from the App Store. Again, this is Android, you can also do it on iPhone, iOS. And we're gonna just see how the interface looks and see if it has any updating and how to do all that. All you gotta do is download the Free Flight 6 application from the App Store. You see it's a whole new application for this drone. So make sure you get that downloaded on your phone. Then all we're doing is taking the cable they give us in the box and plugging it into the large USB port. And we don't have to deal with any syncing or wireless connectivity to the controller. Very easy, all we do is slide our phone, put it in here. Looks like it's got a really nice and solid grip to it. And then all I'm doing is plugging the other end of the cable into my USB type C connector on my phone. Super simple. Getting a couple of pieces of information here. Do you want to use default with this accessory? Yes, I'm just going to make it open when I plug that in. So just pressing OK. You can see that it's opening the Free Flight 6. OK, we got some terms of use. You can look through that if you want. And then accept is in green once we scroll all the way down. Allow access to your GPS location. OK, clicking on it. Allow, allow. Make sure you allow all this stuff. Share data to help pair it. I'm just gonna go ahead and share. I don't really care, um, but I'd like for them to be able to improve things, so I'm gonna share it. Now we need to uh, turn on the Anafi, so can't forget to open up the legs first. Let's power this thing on and really just see how the gimbal like boots up and stuff. This will be interesting. And check out that gimbal. Wow, that was pretty cool. Do you see that boot up process? I'm just waiting for some status on our phone screen here. The controller should sync. And there we go. You see how easy that was? For optimal flight experience, please download the latest firmware. Okay, so might as well go through this update if it doesn't take too long. So we'll just go ahead and press continue. And it looks like firmware has already downloaded. That was quick. Sending to controller. You can see that we have a little meter going around right there, the yellow meter to tell us how fast and you know the completion of our update. But I really like the circle status of what's going on over here by the controller icon. It's really informative to know exactly what's going on. Looks like it's trying to disconnect and reconnect 
through the USB cable a couple times. And it's doing that pretty quickly. Looks like it says controller is ready. So firmware, we have check boxes all the way down. I'm gonna press continue. Cool, and now check this out. Now it's already downloaded the firmware for the actual Anafi. And you can see now it's actually updating the drone itself. So this looks like it's gonna take a few minutes. Same thing, it's gonna, it downloaded the firmware, it's sending the drone now, sending to the drone, and then it has to do its update and reboot. Looks like it got to about half of the circle, and it's been about two minutes, and it's staying there for a while. It's been there for about 30 seconds. So hopefully uh, nothing's wrong. Uh, I'm just gonna let it sit here for a bit. Okay guys, so checking in about five minutes after that last video where it was 50% and it looks like it's still there check it out so I'm getting a little bit worried I'm gonna give it maybe another five minutes and then gosh I guess we're gonna have to reboot this thing kind of like you've got to do with DJI products sometimes when they hang in their updates so a little bit disappointed already that it looks like it's hang it's hanging but I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt just give it a few more minutes and we'll continue on okay so I've pretty much given up on this thing uh, continuing its update it's been another five minutes and there's no movement whatsoever it's just halfway done so apparently something hung up in the update process uh, so let's try to deal with this so what do we do can we go cancel all right, so I canceled the update and that actually brings us into the free flight six application. We have battery percentage of the controller and it's only 14%. So maybe that's kind of what happened. I should probably put some uh, juice in this controller and then we'll retry that update again. Sorry about that. I probably should have charged it up before I started. I thought it might have about 50% charge, but I was wrong. It's only got about 14%. And I guess that kind of brings us to a little bit of a con is you can't figure out the charge state of the controller uh, without connecting it to the phone. So it would be nice if there was like a little button and a little meter here to know how much charge you had on your controller without plugging it in to your application. While we're here turning off, pressing once does, it turns it off. So you just have to press a single press and actually turns the whole drone off. Okay guys, so let's try this again. Boy, it did take about an hour to charge this controller up just to let you know since the, uh, the drone here is charged by USB cable only and also the controller it's going to take a while to charge this thing so maybe something uh just a tiny bit of a con here is give yourself like an hour between controller and battery charge because it does take a while and they only give you one cable so you're going to need another usb type c cable to charge both at the same time and also two separate usb plugs so keep that in mind also by the way this thing once the battery is mounted it only takes one quick press to turn the thing on so i don't know if that's a really good thing because if you accidentally press it and it's packed away somewhere it might turn on accidentally so it might have been good for them to have it like hold down to turn on and this time it's going right into free flight six so what I want to do first now is just click on that exclamation mark there up at the top and I want to go into the update so over here on the right of the screen I can see that I have an update to download so I want to continue that and let's see if possibly it's gonna work this time. Okay guys, so that's good news. Um, this time it just took about 15 seconds after it got to the halfway point and I heard the fan shut off. And you can see the power on the back of the drone there. Light is actually going up and down. So I think we're gonna be successful this time. I think it just hung at halfway last time. So if you have this issue, just maybe give it about five, 10 minutes if it's stuck at halfway when you're updating the firmware. If you can't seem to get it to do anything, just go ahead and cancel that update out, restart everything, and start again. This time it looks like it's gonna be successful. Looks like we're actually almost done. It's going very quickly this time. There goes the gimbal. You can kind of see it reassessing itself. And by the way, the bottom of that uh, craft, you can probably see it there blinking on the bottom. That light on the bottom is actually a blue light. So pretty cool. We'll see how that is after it's done updating. We'll have a look at that close up. Awesome, okay, so that the screen just flashed and it's doing another firmware uh, update. So it's started again. You can see the circle just started again and it's sending to drone. So apparently it's doing another update. We'll let that go through and hopefully that finishes also. Oh good, okay, so it was stuck at the halfway point just for about a minute. The drone seems to have rebooted and the line again is going up, so 
we're getting some flashing on the battery again. So this is the second time this is doing this now. So keep in mind after that first hang up, looks like it's going through a reboot and update process two times. So make sure you do all this just to make sure you're on the latest firmware and everything's working properly. And there goes the gimbal again, resetting itself. Okay. And sh we should just be rounding out the last few percent here on the application. You can see it there just about to finish up. And let's see if it can finish and we can be all set. All right, I see propellers spinning. Awesome, that means apparently it finished. We're gonna press continue here on the screen. And there we go, excellent. So while we're here, we'll just go into a drone calibration. It looks like it's in red, so let's just try it. It is saying uh, you are going to calibrate the drone. This is a short operation. Let's just try to calibrate. You probably wanna do this out in your flying field away from your house and a bunch of metal, but we'll just do it just in case. So we want to do this movement. So I'm just turning it until that stops. There we go. And then we want to do this forward down movement and spin it. Okay, there we go. And then we want to do kind of a roll. So we're just rolling, being careful not to press any power buttons or the camera. There we go, calibration failed. Okay, you know what that means is there's probably too much uh, metal and interference in my house here. So we'll do that again in the field and when we do our flight test. If you don't want to do that, just press the back arrow apparently and check it out. There we go. So there's our interface. You can see that we have our FPV there. Uh, let's see what the kind of the latency is if I go in front of the drone and uh, let's just move my hand here. And you can see that it's on par with all the other type of like Mavic and other drones out there with kind of a Wi-Fi. So all the kind of the normal interface uh, through Parrot drones, Parrot smart drones, you can see that we have like a takeoff up there. We have percentage of the controller. It's in GPS mode. It's got signal. The controller has GPS, but the, the drone is red. So it's not good GPS for takeoff because we're in the house here. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can do uh, software takeoff by pressing that button, of course, or takeoff by the controller, which we'll be doing in the flight test. We have distance from us in meters, height in meters, and speed in meters per second, which hopefully we can change in the settings. Click on speed settings, we've got film, and then we have sport over here. So you can change that to very fast flight or nice and smooth flight for filming, that's great. We have flight modes here, we're in manual flight, we have cameraman, smart dronies, touch to fly, or touch and fly, follow me and you can see follow me is locked okay so we are gonna have to purchase follow me and flight plan unfortunately so come on parrot get it together and just give those out of the box my only gripe here is with that so far on the software cine shots so we can do 360 reveal rise epic so kind of pre-programmed shots that they have in uh, their new software here that they had in the bebop 2 also has that as well We've got the camera and the uh, video modes here. And we can see that in the video mode, we can do standard, we can do uh, all these pop up on the bottom, standard cinema, hyperlapse, slow motion, uh, high frame rate. So pretty cool, can't really scroll that way. Let's go to camera and look at our, we got si uh, single shot or time shot in camera mode. We have our aspect ratio, uh, JPEG, and we can adjust some things down here. Auto or manual, we can adjust our ESO, white balance, EV, style, JPEG, RECT. So lots of stuff here to, you know, to modify here. If we go into back into video, we can do 4K, and let's see, we can do 4K or 1080, all right? So they give you two options there. And let's see if we can adjust our frames per second, 30, 25, or 24 in 4K. If we go to 1080, we've got frames per second, 30, 25, and 24 also in 1080. I'm not seeing any 120 here. I thought for some reason I was gonna see 120 for some reason. Maybe it was high frame rate. Oh, there we go, okay. So 1080, 60. Yeah, so we can go up to 60 and 1080. We can go into our map, of course. Now the map seems to be on the right. 
and we can just zero in on ourselves if we wanted to. It looks like it's not picking up my location because look at my GPS is red and bad up there. There is the FPV there. We click on that and we're back here. We do have it out of the map mode. We can see our compass here. So pretty cool. You see how I'm turning it kind of left and right on the controller and it's showing me the direction my controller is facing in comparison to the craft. Kind of like all Parrot uh, free flight apps do. Really good feature there, I really like it. Anyway, that's everything on the screen. Let's go into the settings here. So check it out. So we have all of the uh, information on the controls here. Show mini map, we have all these options. Map type, I like the hybrid, that's the satellite and the street names together. You can choose to hand launch or not. Show frame grid, yes or no if you want that grid to show on your FPV. Let's go to piloting, and we're gonna see uh, film and sport. Those were the two modes. And it's great that they let you really adjust uh, the speed on these two modes. So you can really hone it how you wanna take your film. You can slow down all of your different axes, the way the, the craft flies, just to get the really slow and steady flight. Or you can like turn up in sport mode. You can just go ahead and just crank all these up if you really wanted to. Of course, you're going to have to be careful. You can turn on banked turn off and on if you wanted to. So I'm just going to leave all these things as stock for our first flight test. Maybe we'll adjust some of them while we're flying. We'll see how that works. Here is our safety. So max altitude is 30 meters and max distance is 100 meters. So if you want these things to be in play, just press yes, like if you're a beginner. If not, if you want total freedom, just press no and you won't have any geofence on there. Camera settings here, we've got, we can calibrate, auto record on takeoff, up to you. Uh, sometimes people forget to press record, so that might be good if you want that, especially since you have a removable SD card now and you can possibly, hopefully, pop in a higher capacity SD card. Lossless zoom only, use the lossless zoom so you don't distort the video quality. Well, that's interesting. Um, I don't even really know what that means, but Maybe that's worth a try. Time before the picture is taken, okay. Perhaps this is the uh, timed photos. So every five seconds it's gonna take a photo. Anti-flickering, we'll leave that on auto. And of course on the bottom you can reset all the camera specifications. And this is where it's gonna auto, I guess, find its best Wi-Fi setting. So I just have it at auto right now. And that's really all you can do. Man, I don't see any options to change in Android at least. I don't see any options to change it to Imperial because I don't really like having the meters and meters per second. I'm in the US, so I like seeing feet and mile per hour. And if it's anything like the other Free Flight Pro is you have that option in iOS, but you don't have that option in Android. So keep that in mind, guys. If that bothers you, I'm not sure why they haven't updated that yet, but I'm only getting metric. All right, guys, well, I think that's it. That pretty much goes through everything in the menu of at least an Android phone. I just wanted to pick this up and show you guys real quick how that blue light looks on the bottom. There it is there. I probably shouldn't have done that, but that's it there. The camera didn't like that at all. Speaking of the camera, check it out. So this is the one where the camera can tilt all the way up. If I go forward, look at that camera there. It's just going all the way, uh, keeping itself forward, even though I'm tilting way up. And if I go down... It goes to about right there before it snaps back up. So pretty cool. Looks like a good camera. And apparently uh, it's going to have, you know, it's a little bit of software stabilization, hopefully, for the side to side because there's no mechanical stabilization here. This is only two, pitch and your roll. So we'll see how that all works out in the flight test. It looks pretty good, though. And before we go, one last thing. Let's tilt this camera up. This is what this thing's all about, right? So this is full up on the default setting. Hello there. Tilting it up. And there it is. That's tilting all the way up maximum to my roof. So if I pick it up, not much to see there. There's the microphone and my roof and everything. So anyway, that's what you can do with this one. And that's kind of the unique feature for this Anafi is to tilt the camera all the way up. Anyway guys, that just about wraps it up for this initial review. Um, stick around for the next video. I'll have that linked in the description and also I'll have a pop box pop up here so you guys can see that initial flight test. I've got high hopes for this. Um, Parrot's uh, high-end drones, their smart drones and planes and stuff have been really good at decent prices. So. 
I think this one's gonna be pretty good. It looks really small and light and compact and it has some good features. Uh, we're gonna test them all in several videos to come. We're gonna do flight tests, possibly one to two flight tests, then we're gonna do range tests and we're also gonna do some cinematic uh, tests also out in the ocean here in Hawaii and see how this works in those situations. Thanks for watching guys. Links in the description of where you can find this stuff and I will see you in the coming flight test videos.